Mike Trout here. I've got no voice because I left it in Shanghai after spending a very, very intense time at UndevCon and DevCon launching FoundUps. I share the vision of FoundUps with a lot of people. And I'm back now. I'm exhausted. I'm trying to recover my throat and not talk too much. And I want to talk about certain things. And I want to talk about, in particular, Chandler Gao, an amazing man. I consider my brother and someone that I know has a very important role in redefining our planet and saving it from this. I watch, this is uh, the Requiem of the American Dream. And, and I, you know, I've watched it so many times and every time I see something new. And here's a graph that has total tax revenue. It's from the Department of Treasury, right? Now understand this video is four years old. So this data is actually, this line should be going down more. But this is why there's an inequality runaway train. And as these people are making more and more money off capital gains. Now understand, found-ups will return up to 100% of capital gains back to something I call the Dow. The Dow is kind of like the Federal Reserve for the planet. It is held by the people for the people. But I just want you to see this here. You know, in the 1970s, it was out of control, but then the environment, you know, it actually was, it wasn't out of control. Actually, it was, it was where it should be, around 40% of capital gains. And now it's all the way down to under 20%. So it went from 40%, 100%. ups is going to double that and take it up to 80%. We have massive problems on our planet. And the reason is because of a simple equation. And this simple equation can, if we replace it, changes everything. The simple equation I'm talking about is CAGR, Compounded Annual Growth Rate. And what it is, it's the equation that drives capitalism. It's the equation that basically is powering inequality. It's the equation that is powering growth in all these cities. It's the equation that ultimately is driving the collapse of our planet. I live here in Japan in a sustainable house that I developed called Foundup's House. This is the first one. Now, I'll be honest with you, my wife built this and I would never have built anything like this, so Foundup Houses hopefully will be built from old, used, sustainable houses that are or old houses that are reconverted. This is gonna be a fish pond where fish will grow and we'll eat them. Is all edible herbs, and it's a permaculture natural garden. It's you know, it's not a pretty garden, but everything in here, from the apple mint, right, to the fennel, to the red clover that's put nitrogen in the soil, all of this, and the and the and the red shisel, and the green seashell, right, and the and the biwa tree that can be turned into amazing leaf. And here are the fig trees and the water barrel that's catching the air, the water off here that has actually plants growing in it. All of this here, and even there's some more herbs here, this is thyme. All of this here is ultimately sustainable. I've created a habitat for lizards and other insects to live. And my latest friends that I've added, instead of adding a dog or a cat, I've added some amazing guys, actually, five little girls. And let's see if we can find her. And there's one of them right there. This is Blackie. This is Blackie. Hey, girl. Oh, here comes, here they come. Hey, girls. Hey, yeah. Each of them has a different personality. Each of them, each of them has a different flavor. This is Mick Mick. The youngest, she doesn't lay eggs yet, but all these others are laying eggs. We're missing one. Because of these girls, I don't have a problem with pesticides. They eat all the insects. And I created a home for them right here out of this shed. They live in here, and actually it has a grow light that's powered by solar that's on all the time. And ultimately that attracts insects all night. And they're eating all night. It's simple, and we don't have any mosquito problems. We don't have any problems. 
Sustainable living is so important in our planet, in a planet that wants to build houses that just look like this. Here is a modern Japanese house. It has no garden. It's just a box on a piece of ground. It provides no, nothing beneficial to the planet. I mean, it's kind of like a grave. It's like living in a grave. It provides no ecosystem. It provides nothing. Whereas if you flip around, I build a little habitat here. What I'd love to put in here is, is actually a solar farm, even more, and a habitat with beehives and everything else. Um, if the guy will sell me the land, that's what I'm gonna do. As I said in the beginning, this talk actually is about my friend Chandler Gao and his motivations and what's going on. And, and I first, to be honest with you, I had the greatest respect for Chandler because it appeared to me that he basically realized he made a mistake and he has that I am 1776 video and the revolution and for the people. Well, it turns out that his motivations aren't as pure as he made out to be. That actually his motivations, my dear friend, and you should come clean, has nothing to do with people's choice. But the simple fact is, Ethereum's fork that is coming is going to cost you tens of millions of dollars. You see, Chandler has invested tens of millions of dollars into mining, mining in Tibet, where he has a deal, which is an amazing deal. He's such a smart investor or, or entrepreneur. He's not an innovator. He's an entrepreneur. He figured out how to make money, how to dig Bitcoin and make money and store hydroelectricity that was just going nowhere into Bitcoin. I, ironically, I'm going to imagine that Tibet is probably one of the richest uh, countries on the planet. They've been doing this a long time and they haven't spent any of their Bitcoin and they get 10% of everything been mined. Now, why did Chandler then decide to pick ETC over ETH? Basically, this is the reason. Ethereum is going to hard fork into proof of stake. Now they're doing this for one and one reason only. It gives FinTech the power to get in on the, on the decision making. Because you see, proof of stake is based on how much money you have. And ultimately, FinTech, Wall Street, has basically so much money, it's not even funny. They can outbid any, any miner. Whereas, ultimately, proof of work, I'm gonna sit here, it's kind of windy, I don't know if it's blowing, but I'm gonna sit here in this corner. Whoa, oh, that's better. I need to make my seat a little bit more comfortable. Proof of work, which Chandler needs, relies on mining power. So, this whole revolution facade for Chandler has really nothing to do with people's voice but everything to do with protecting his stake. Possibly this whole hack and everything else may have been perpetuated by someone like a miner. I'm not saying Chandler, I think Chandler would never do that. But I think once the realization that potentially hundreds of millions of dollars globally, if you, if you, if you collected combined all of the mining, you could see the motivation why why this, you know, this fork is very important for the survival of the miners. Also, Chandler hasn't mentioned that he has spent millions of dollars developing a new chip that ultimately is going to supercharge mining. Now, my dear brother Chandler, who again, I highly respect and like, and I'm not making this video out of spite. I'm making this video because I believe people should be truthful. I think people should be honest and ultimately I want my brother Chandler to come forward and be that man and not be a facade like we have to deal with all these fintech people. We have enough of that bullshit to deal with the foundation of Ethereum that ultimately over the course of the establishment of, of Ethereum in the last two years have sold out to fintech. That's right. 
You see, Ethereum is the golden egg that's going to save fintech because they've already raped the planet of its resources and of its money. Over 45% of all money generated now is financial tech. 45% and what the fuck are they doing with it? They're doing absolutely nothing. They're just making richer people more richer. So the reason why I'm making this video is because this is what's going to happen. Chandler's going to make a play to dump ETC. He's going to, like, he's going to basically uh, drop all of his holdings. Now understand, he has invested since the fork, collectively, not just him, but the, the, the whole collective engine has invested over $30 million in keeping ETC alive. There's something called a 51 attack, which basically really simple is I'm going to um, crash something by pulling out all its equity. The only counter to that cash is putting in equity. So as people are pulling out, people are putting in, right? Miners are putting, are basically buying ETC. The attackers are selling ETC. It's, it's, it's an endurance test. And ultimately, what Chandler wants is he wants the 30% of holdings that, that Ethereum Classic and folks like... Um, Joe, uh, Joseph uh, Lup uh, uh, Lupin, I think, um, all these, you know, Vitalik is holding, uh, holds about 10% or maybe more. Um, a lot of people hold lots of ETC, and they're holding it for strategic reasons. One is that they can dump it really quick to kill it, and the illusion is going to be this, that Chandler is going to motivate. And why is Chandler doing this? Because he wants, he, wants, he wants to be able to fork. He wants to be able to change the mining code, another little line of code, that will allow a new chip to be used and ultimately when this new chip is used every miner on the planet will have to upgrade their rig and who has made the chip? Chandler Gao. My brother I admire you as an entrepreneur but don't be like all these other assholes out there taking advantage of a situation for your own benefit. You have enough money there's no reason why you need more money. There's no reason why you have to go this route. And I'm asking my brother not to do it. Who am I? My name is Mike Trout. I consider myself a royal. As Vitalik's dad said in a recent conversation, yeah, you're a real royal pain in the ass. I hope so. Because it's about time someone like me stands up and says no to a $200 million valuation to buy my company, like, which I did last week. I said no, because no organization, no individual, no person is going to own the found up. You see, the found up is going to replace the startup. FinTech is dead. Wall Street is dead. They're all walking dead with my solution. And ultimately, that little line of code that is called compounded annual growth rate that powers everything I'm going to replace with CABR. Compounded annual benefit rate. What is CABR? CABR is the love factor that innovation has on the planet. You know, um, CABR is built on the idea of, 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 of benefit to the planet. How is this startup? How is this found up? How is this idea actually benefiting, right? the living systems on the planet? How is it benefiting the individuals? And are we sharing it with others openly and freely instead of enclosed capital networks for the benefit of the 1%? You see, CABR collapses FinTech. It collapses the startup. It, it removes the VC. We can say bye-bye Sequoia Capital. It's been nice knowing you, but your game is done. CABR is why a venture capitalist Shamu, I call him, Alinga Tahid, who has invented a part of Kaber and has a valuation of 1.5 billion, like a hungry whale that he was, he saw found ups and he goes, oh, I want to own, I want to control. And I told Alinga, and I like Alinga, don't get me wrong, I really do like you, Alinga, but you are a fucking Shamu, like I said, and you laughed and you gloated when I realized when I called you on it. And that moment, my attitude towards you changed. And it's like this. You're no different than fucking Chandler, which I love as a brother. I love you as a brother. But you guys have to wake up. 
to undo. Because undo is here, and we're going to undo. We're going to unimagine, and we are going to create the unbelievable world built on the Tao that's going to usher in the do. Undo, my brothers.